and hopefully everyone can see my slides now. Um, so, so the plan for today is really to focus on, like I said, this new OpenStack powered program and some of the new technical requirements around that, um, which should be especially relevant to those of you who might be launching some new products around the Vancouver Summit. We usually start getting a lot of requests about right now, so we want to make sure that everyone is informed about the new program and, and processes, and then um, talk a little bit about how we're planning to roll it out to the broader market as well. Uh, and then finally, if there are any other topics or questions you guys have, we can, uh, we can use the rest of the, the hour to go through that. So, uh, so with that, we'll get started. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to throw them into the chat or, um, or jump on the line. Either way, it's fine. Um, so just to give a quick, um, you know, set the context, Hopefully most of you are familiar with our commercial product marketing programs right now. We have three logos that we license to companies who offer OpenStack products. And those logos are powered, compatible, and training. And each of them are for you know, different types of products and services. And you know, they have different technical requirements and they allow different usage of the trademark, the OpenStack trademark, whether that's um, the word OpenStack in the product name or the use of these different logos. So just kind of a quick refresher on the, on the overall program that's, that's been in place for some time. Um, today we're going to focus on the OpenStack powered products. So those, if you're, this is a screenshot from the OpenStack marketplace, um, those OpenStack powered products would fall under the distributions and appliances, public clouds or hosted private clouds right now. So these are primarily the, these are the products that we're talking about today. Um, so what we'd like to do is talk a little bit about the evolution of this, the OpenStack powered program in particular. Um, and some of this has been through policies set by the board uh, from the DEF Corps committee. Um, and I don't know. You want to jump in, Mark? Or have me sure. keep going? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm really excited about this because, you know, we've been talking for a while about um, how important interoperability is and trying to make sure there's consistency out in the marketplace in response to, you know, user expectations and setting those expectations. And so, you know, definitely would love to thank, you know, everybody who's worked on this, this committee as part of the board. Um, you know, it's, it's been a lot of hard work. In and gathering feedback and constantly getting, uh, you know, different perspectives and and also um, you know iterating as we go. And so you know we're excited because this is the first time now um, as of today that we're going to start um, doing new license agreements under the OpenStack powered uh, kind of program and logo that include these testing requirements. And so you know, having a clear set of what's expected in these types of products that are branded this way is going to be great for, for people out in the marketplace looking for products to know what to expect and then actually having real world tests that, that we can run against those to validate that it works the way it's expected has a lot of benefits for you know, driving the market forward. So thanks to everybody on the, the DEF core group and the people who have been putting input into that. Um, now we're, we're able to kind of operationalize this from the standpoint of the foundation licensing and so forth, and I think it's, it's a big milestone. Yeah, so if you are familiar with the, um, with the older technical requirements for OpenStack Powered, they're basically what we had in place um, for quite a few years now, um, since the early days of OpenStack. And in order to qualify for OpenStack Powered, you had to include all of the OpenStack um, Nova compute code, all of the OpenStack Swift object storage code, and then expose the APIs. Um, so the major changes to this going forward are, one, um, we now have three different programs under this powered license. So if it's a compute only cloud, if it's a storage only cloud, or if it's a platform, which is essentially a combination of the, the two, they all fall underneath this, this powered logo. Um, and two, the biggest change are, are these new API tests. Um, which match up to designate sections of code. So we're really exciting, like Mark, excited, like Mark said in particular about this new testing. So, um, any questions about that so far? We're going to 
go through a little bit in more detail about the different programs that we just mentioned. Um, the powered uh, platform, compute, and object storage. Um, the main differences between them, obviously, is that you know compute is has to include all of the the compute specific designated codes and expose those capabilities, while object storage needs to include the object storage designated code and expose those capabilities. And there's differences um, primarily in the way that you can use OpenStack in the name of your product. So, um, so for example, with OpenStack Platform, which includes all of the compute and object storage, you can use OpenStack in your product name like um, like distributions do now. So, you know, Acme OpenStack um, or whatever else. But uh, but under the compute or object storage, you need to use the qualifier with with computer object storage to be more specific. Yeah, and, and I, I just. One thing to emphasize here is the program names, these are just literally the names of the licensing programs. These are not brands themselves, so you're not going to go out and, and use the words in this left column under program names. This is literally just something we call each licensing program so we can be clear about what the requirements and the, the different rights are associated with them, but those are not brands per se. OpenStack Powered is, is the brand overall that, 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 that kind of indicates to the market, okay, these things are actually powered by OpenStack software. Yeah. So don't get too hung up on those names. Those are just kind of there to you know, help us uh, spell out uh, with each licensing program you know, what the different requirements are and you know, some examples of what types of rights convey once you meet those requirements. Yeah, that's a good point. Those are not public brands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so now we want to talk a little bit about um, how you participate in these programs. So, um, so there's a couple of new steps that are, you know, really specific to this, um, the new testing requirements. Um, if you go to openstack.org/interop, you'll find all these details, including, um, you know, the designated sections of code that must be included and the different API level tests that your product needs to pass in order to qualify. Um, and then there are also instructions on this page of how how to run those specific tests. And I think actually um, Chris Hodge is on the line too on this call. He um, is the interop engineer that works with the OpenStack Foundation and has been you know, helping with this process with the Deaf Corps Committee and getting the test set up. And he's a good resource um, for you as you're going through this process. If you have any questions or, or need help getting started, his contact information, um, well, he responds to the interop at openstack.org alias and his contact information is on that page uh, for future reference. But basically, the, the primary steps are going to this interop page, you know, checking out the requirements, checking with your product teams to make sure um, that, you, that you meet all these requirements, um, and then going back through the same process that we've had in place for some time where you go to the OpenStack brand page. Um, there's an online form to submit where we just ask for a few more details about your product um, where you'll indicate that you're interested in the, the powered license at that step. Um, and then once we have your test results submitted to the interop at openstack.org email address, we will go ahead and execute the license agreement. So it's basically just adding in that additional, the additional testing step before we will we'll execute the license agreement there. And then as always, um, we are definitely happy and would like to work with you if you're doing a product launch um, or you know, need help uh, understanding how to incorporate the logo and the word mark into your product collateral and branding, we're, we're there to help and we definitely want to um, help spread the news of products and services in the open space. So I was going to um, actually just pull up these pages on the website to, to show everyone and make sure everyone's familiar. So I'm going to um, back out of the presentation for a second and, um, and go through these pages. So the first one I mentioned was this, um, the, just the general OpenStack brand page. So um, hopefully most of you are familiar with this. It, it goes through just you know, some helpful information and requirements um, both for you know, just community use, non-commercial use of the logos as well as um, details around commercial use and the different programs that, that we discussed a little bit on this call. So um, you'll notice the, the changes that we made with this new launch are that you know, we added in the requirement to pass the interoperability test and where to get that information um, and just you know, made a few updates to this page as we roll out this program. So from here you would click through to, to OpenStack Powered 
and you can see the, the updated technical requirements on this page and links to, uh, to reference those on the interop page. And um, from here is where you would go through and, uh, and fill out the form to, to request a trademark license. And you would indicate here that you're looking for a Powers logo um, and fill out your, your company name and the name of your product, which is very important because that's one thing that we do um, check and provide permission for if you're using OpenStack in the name of your product. We need to make sure it's done properly. And then a little description about your product and the type of product it is. So that's a, um, the steps that you would take on the branding page. And then if you were to click over to the interoperability page, um, you can see in more detail, again, it's the same chart that we showed about the different programs and kind of high-level requirements for that. Um, and then goes down into the, into the very specific required capabilities and, and tests that you'd be running uh, in order to qualify, as well as instructions on how to run the actual tests and, as I mentioned, information to get in touch with the foundation should you need some help with that. So are there any questions at this point or um, want to take a minute? Uh, I have a question. So uh, if you were already issued an OpenStack powered logo like last year or the year before because you launched a public cloud, this is, I guess, anyone who already has an OpenStack powered logo and you've been using it, uh, we we also have to go through this new requirement, right? And and run through the test re testing requirements and to obtain the the, I guess, the new licensing agreement. That is a, it's such a good question that it's literally the next slide. So perfect time. Okay. Um, we, we we thought there might be some questions on this. So so right now, um, uh, this is. Uh, effective immediately for all new products that are going to be licensed, you know, with OpenStack powered licenses. For existing products, um, what we encourage you to do is to, to actually look at the technical requirements, um, make sure that you meet those, and actually start working with us on testing those and, and signing updated agreements. And it's not something you have to do immediately, you know, contractually and so forth, but there's a lot of reason that uh, benefit really to getting on, on top of that. One is we want to actually um, start to call out in the marketplace starting around the Vancouver Summit you know, which products um, uh, have been tested and sort of show the, the check marks next to all the capabilities showing, hey, you've got these capabilities. So you know, that will help put those in a, in a more positive light. And then our goal, uh, so we, of course we'd love to have everybody in the marketplace there for Vancouver. It may not be realistic, but um, uh, you know, our goal is definitely by the end of this year to, to have really understand the, the situation with every product in the marketplace. Uh, we'd hope that they would all be tested and have the licenses updated by the end of the year. So uh, there's kind of a, a two, two answers to it. One is you know, our, our recommendation slash you know, kind of ideal outcome, which is everybody um, kind of takes advantage of this opportunity to be part of something we're going to message heavily at the summit, which is look at all these products that are we have testing now, look at which ones are tested, but it's not something that you you know absolutely have to do for your older previously launched products you know right away. Um, so I hope that that answers your question. Yeah, thanks. Cool. So, uh, you know, in terms of you know what what all of this means, you know, from a messaging perspective and kind of the impact we're trying to make, you know, I mentioned that this is something we we want to talk about quite a bit at, at the Vancouver Summit um, because I think people, users in the market, and people you know looking at OpenStack have been asking about interoperability and wanting to to know more about what's possible and what's not, and wanting to make sure we're doing testing. So you know, it's really you know inter about all about interoperability, and so we will be talking quite a bit about that. You know, we want that. I think this is important when we think about the ecosystem above OpenStack. So people that are building apps for OpenStack APIs, for OpenStack clouds, whether they're consuming public or private clouds or hybrid clouds, or if they're you know, if you think about platforms like PaaS and things like that, you know, we want to get this very solid foundation that that all this ecosystem above. OpenStack can, can rely on, and so that's why we're doing this. Um, and you know, We want to also be educating people when they see that OpenStack powered logo on your website, or if they see it, your product in our marketplace, they understand what it means and they, they, their expectations are met, and there's a you know, definitive list of you know, what, what qualifies and what, what to expect.
Um, yeah, so, um, so in terms of, of educating the broader market about that, so right now we're really trying to communicate you know, these new programs and requirements um, to the community itself <laughs> to, to get folks on board, um, especially ahead of, like I mentioned earlier, the kind of new product launches that often happen around the summit. So right now it's kind of the, the internal <laughs> community focused education, trying to get people onboarded. Um, and like Mark said, the incentive to that is that we are planning to, um, to really message this strongly around the Vancouver Summit. So um, in the keynote presentation, we'll really be focusing on these new OpenStack powered program and the reason why you know, consumers should really seek this out in the market. Um, we're actually going to be issuing a press release around the summit to um, hopefully showcasing um, all the OpenStack powered products that have um, you know, taken these, these new API tests. So that's again another incentive to go ahead and get tested and, and have that showcased in the marketplace as well as this press release. Um, we're going to be briefing press and analysts about the new program and, and the meaning of that and how we're really focused on interoperability and, and the meaning for you know, the community and the market overall. Um, and finally, in the actual expo hall, which we you know, call the physical marketplace, we'll have different signage um, focused on, on OpenStack powered products. If you, know, if you offer an OpenStack powered product, there might be a, um, a sticker or signage in your booth as well as some, um, I guess, educational signage overall. So we're planning to, to really go big on this at the summit. So it's something that we definitely want to uh, roll out and get everyone um, onboarded in the community so we can make uh, as big and unified of a splash as possible. Yeah, and, and I would just add um, that you know, because this, we are for the first time introducing this, this set of tests, um, you know, there, there most likely are going to be bugs or challenges you run into running the tests, and that's why we've got Chris Hodge um, you know, there to help. Um, and we want to you know, be iterating on those tests and as well as the documentation around it so that you know, uh, hopefully in the not too distant future you'll be able to, to very quickly and easily just you know, download the test, run it against your product, you know, your running cloud, and, and get, get results back. Um, we're getting there, but we're not quite to the, the nirvana state yet. So you know, bear with us. Um, we certainly want, uh, want to work with companies as you're running the tests and, and help you understand kind of how to set it up and what the results mean. And if you get a, a negative result, you know, it could be a false negative, there could be a bug, so don't panic if you see any, any errors. You know, just um, help us kind of work the kinks out of it here um, in the early days. And, and then in the long run, I think it will be, it'll be quite automated. You know, we are leveraging a lot of the, the great work from the OpenStack QA team upstream, so I want to thank those folks as well. You know, they, they operate a test framework called Tempest as part of the, the development cycle day in and day out. I'm sure the developers for you guys, um, companies are all, all familiar with this, but it's, it's, it's a really great uh, way in which we ensure quality upstream as the code is developed day in and day out and new patches come in. So what we're really trying to do is align the downstream products that are you know, productizing that code to kind of you know, be, be sure that it still meets those same types of um, quality standards. And so leveraging those same tests is, is uh, the, the approach we're taking, which is, which is the way to go. So. Yeah. Um, and like Mark said, we at the, the foundation staff level are really focused on um, the execution of this in terms of you know, getting the test ready and helping companies through this testing process as well as you know, executing these new license agreements and the logo programs. But um, the actual policy is set by that board committee called DEFCORE that we mentioned earlier. Um, and if you're interested in getting involved in the evolution of that, it is, you know, a very open process. Um, it's, there's a mailing list. Yeah, there's, there's a mailing list. It's a board committee, join, yeah. but, um, but anyone can participate and join and, and share their opinions. So, um, you know, if this is important to you, which I'm assuming that it is, it's a good place to get involved and, uh, and help set that, that direction as well. Yeah, I don't know if you were going to show them the page, but I was going to talk a little bit about sort of the fact that uh, there will be multiple versions, or I guess multiple specifications over time of what's required. Right now there's just one because we're at the beginning, but uh, uh, the way that the, the specifications uh, are numbered or are labeled is 
uh, based on the year and month when they were approved by the board, just to kind of you know, make it easy for us to have a naming scheme. So the first iteration, which is what's detailed out on the, the interop page, openstack.org slash interop, is uh, uh, 2015.03. So for extra credit, you can figure out when that was approved. Um, but uh, it is the, the only version right now, but we expect, um, because we're kind of playing catch up, uh, as this is rolled out, there'll be there'll be additional versions approved, you know, uh, this year uh, with with the date stamps on them. But but generally, um, the the idea here is that uh, you need to be um, compliant with uh, one of the two most recent versions. So right now, there's only one. So uh, but once there's multiple um, over time, you know, we've kind of set this up so that it kind of rolls rolls along as a requirement. And um, you know, the day a new version is is approved by the board. You don't have to immediately, um, you know, go change you know, your products. Um, so there's some some lag there, but um, that just kind of explains a little bit about um, the different versions. So if you look at this interop page, this is um, openstack.org/interop is kind of the shorthand. Um, that there's a little bit longer URL, but it, it takes you to this page, and so it explains a lot of the stuff that we talked about in the slides, um, but it really gets into a little bit more of the nitty-gritty on the requirements here, like what are the capabilities, um, how it maps to uh, the compute licensing program, the object storage licensing program, or the platform, which you'll note is really just the addition of these two. Um, so uh, those are the different programs and the capabilities, and uh, the designated sections are, are spelled out here as well, and then um, there's detail here about getting started with the testing. You know, when in doubt, you know, inter email interop at, at openstack.org, which will get, get you in touch with Chris. Um, and then there is actually a link here to um, something that uh, probably your development teams will want to want to look at. It's a little less human readable. It's a JSON file that it sort of the the source of truth for the requirements, but this is sort of summarizing it in a hopefully more human readable format. Um, and I think that's kind of the it. I mean, this this page is going to be um, actually referenced in the new licensing agreement. So effectively, it's going to look a lot like the old OpenStack powered license agreement. But instead of saying trying to spell out in those agreements what the requirements are, it's going to point you to this page. So this. It's a very important page to bookmark um, if you're, if you're you know, doing your product planning and wanting to make sure you understand you know, what we're requiring for these different programs. Cool. Well, that's really um, all that we had to walk through today. So, we'll have to take any more questions or thoughts um, on this as we roll it out. Um, and if there's any other just general marketing OpenStack questions, happy to run through that too. Hi, I have a question. This is Sean Jakes from IBM. Is this going to affect um, whether products are included in the OpenStack marketplace or not? Yeah, so um, what we're planning to do is uh, for new products that are launching, in order to be in the marketplace, they need to be uh, it's specifically the, 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 the categories of products that you know, fall under OpenStack power, so the, the products that include OpenStack. Yeah, we are going to be requiring them to you know, sign these license agreements that have these technical requirements, which include passing the test. So it's kind of yeah, a long ended okay. version of saying yes. Um, on a going forward basis for the existing products, you know, there's going to, we're going to take some time to kind of go back and work with, with those companies and not sort of you know, pull them out um, quickly. Okay. Well, I yeah, thank you. Well, we're very excited about this. Um, it's been it's been a long time in coming, and I think uh, you know there will be more more opportunities to kind of expand the the list of capabilities over time and to, to to beef up the testing. But really, it all starts with that first set of tests and that first set of requirements and getting feedback from the market and feedback from the ecosystem. So I think it's, this is a really good thing for the health of, of OpenStack overall, and that's why you'll be seeing us. You know, kind of talking a lot about it at, at the Vancouver Summit, which of course I hope you're all going to be attending. I've got one question on a different topic, if that's okay. Sure. 
Um, so with the Kilo release coming up on you know April 30th, are there marketing events online or other that the foundation is planning so we can sort of schedule some things around that? Yeah, that's a good question. So one of the things that we are planning around the Kilo release is, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that you're familiar. There are a lot of changes happening um, in the upstream community right now, just in terms of you know, how we're managing and looking at these releases going forward. So one of our main goals from like a marketing and messaging perspective around Kilo is to help communicate those different changes. Um, I think that we've you know, gotten feedback and have kind of been gradually doing this <laughs> in terms of um, taking the, the foot off the pedal a little bit in terms of how we promote the individual releases from like a feature perspective or from you know, going out and and shouting from the rooftops when a new release comes out. We've kind of pulled back from that a little bit, and especially now we're going to be focusing on kind of the evolution um, of the, the project structure and, uh, and how that will be happening in the future. As far as the specific dates, um, we typically do a webinar um, on or around release day. I don't think that we've scheduled that exactly yet, but as soon as we do, I will let you know. Um, and we will do a press release on, on April 30th as well. Um, we probably will schedule another marketing meeting in the next week or two, um, or send something off the list with, with some of those plans, but, um, but we're not quite there yet. Cool. Well, thanks everybody. Um, if you uh, have any questions, you know, send us, send us an email. Um, or you know, post on the marketing mailing list. But uh, I think we'll be putting this recording up as well so you can share with your, your colleagues and for people that, that weren't able to attend today will have, have access to the information. And I guess with the slides going to be on the marketing portal. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.